Hi, welcome. The main idea, main idea that we are going in for is modeling ideas helps to form theories. Modeling ideas help to form theories. Modeling ideas help to form theories. So when the data from experiment shows that the prediction of the hypothesis are successful, scientists typically try to explain the phenomena they are studying by constructing models. So a model is a, uh, in science is more than a physical object. It is often an explanation of how phenomena occur and how data or events are related. So what are we saying here? So we say here mm, uh, a model is a, in science is more than a physical object. A model in science is more than a physical object. It's more than a physical object. It is often, it is often an explanation. It is often an explanation of how phenomena occur, of how phenomena occur and how data or events are related and how data or events are related. So models basically they help to make things easy for scientists and also easy for anyone who is coming uh, to benefit from the research that has been carried, be it a scientist or someone who is not a scientist. We take just a quick, simple example, and that is the model of the structure of an atom, the model of a structure of an atom. So if we look at this model here, maybe you have one, two, three, these are the protons, then you also have one, two, three, lithium. It will also have other things in it which are the neutrons. So this together is the nucleus and around it are electrons. This is a model that helps us to explain what an atom looks like. This is just but an example of a model and you can see how a model really makes things easy. One important model in chemistry is the atomic model of matter, which states that matter is composed of tiny particles called atoms. So one important
model in chemistry is the atomic model of matter. Is the atomic model of Mara, which states that, which states that Mara is composed of tiny particles. Mara is composed of tiny particles. composed of tiny particles called atoms called atoms so if a model successfully explains many, ph many phenomena it may become part of a theory so if it happens that it explains if it happens that a model successfully explains many phenomena it may become part of a theory so the atomic model is part of the atomic theory where is part of the atomic theory which we will be looking at as we continue with our studies of chemistry so what happens here is if a model if a model successfully if a model successfully explains many phenomena explains many phenomena it may become it may become part of a theory it may become part of a theory the atomic model is part of the atomic theory for example the atomic model is part of the atomic theory it's part of the atomic theory which part of the atomic theory which we will be looking at but uh, so we'll be looking at this later on it's part of the atomic theory so atoms which are the building blocks of matter so a theory is a broad generalization that explains a body of facts a theory is a broad generalization a theory is a broad generalization is a broad generalization that explains a body of facts that explains a body of facts that explains a body of facts or phenomena or phenomena 
So theories are considered successful if they can predict the results of many new experiments. So experiments of the important theories you will study in chemistry, uh, like the one of kinetic or molecular theory and collision theory, we will be looking at them as just part of examples of models. So, so what we mean here is that after carrying out research and scientists coming up with the conclusions and these conclusions going through peer testing, then what happens next would be that they will be released as theories. So a theory is a scientific body uh, which of course is dependent on proof, is dependent on proof. You could easily prove the theory by using, I mean you, you can show the proof of how you came up with the theory and not the way we know theory in our normal day as being something which is uh, unrealistic or something which is not achievable. In science it's not like this. In science a theory in fact can be proved unlike the normal theory that we think of in our day-to-day -day conversation when someone says it's a theory it means that there is no enough proof for it but in science a, a theory bas has basically normally has proof for it so hope uh, you benefit from this video and keep on with the pace so that you could learn more and progress well. Uh, welcome for another video in the next coming session.